Hey, I'm Zanzi and welcome to Farmers Inside Track episode 169. I'm your host, Dornumdu. A big thanks to Duncan Masiwa for hosting the last two editions. It was great to have you back on the podcast, buddy. In Mzanzi, beef cattle fattening can be a profitable business to start, but understanding the ins and outs of what beef cattle pen fattening is and how to start a feedlot is vital. Food for Mzanzi journalist Octavius Pandil joins us in this edition connecting with Tigeseng Lesako, a consultant at Growth Shoot Cattle Investors based in the Free State. She shares some tips on how new farmers and newly commercialized farmers can start a feedlot in Mzanzi. Over to you, Octavia. Thank you, Dawn. Ticket saying, how would you explain what an animal feedlot is, especially for someone who has found a recent interest in feedlots? Animal feedlot is a place whereby animals are confined in small spaces and fed intensively. What is the function of animal feedlots in the South African context? The main function of the feedlot is to provide a link between producers, who are our farmers, and the abattoirs, whereby our animals go to the final stage before they become meat and then it is to provide jobs and also to grow animals faster in a short space of time to their full slaughter weight. What that basically means is that once your animals are grown faster they're still young animals so they're not hard so that means they will provide our consumers with tender meat that's where your tender steaks your top restaurant meat comes from so that is what the feedlot does to get us tender meat that is of good quality. Can you give us advantages and disadvantages of animal feedlots? Disadvantages are animals in the feedlot are more prone to diseases that the animals that are farmed extensively are not likely to suffer. For an example, we've got respiratory diseases, we've got like tummy issues with them, they like they would scour, and then we've got clostridial diseases. So those are not the kind of diseases that normally our extensively reared animals phase but in the feedlots you have to watch out for those and they are critical diseases because once they're not taken care of or not taken into account they might damage what you have and maybe cost you a whole lot of money another disadvantage is that they are labor intensive so what labor intensive means is that i'm going to make an example i'm going to keep making comparison between when you farm extensively and when you're feedlotting or when you are intensive your extensive animals, you can go to them, check on them, count them, make sure that they are okay, and then you come back and then that's it. But with your intensive animals, you have to go in the morning, check on them, make sure that they've got feed, and that is daily work. You cannot just decide, to oh, I'm going to feed them now and I'm done. No, you have to keep on checking on them. You have to make sure that there's nobody that's getting sick in the crawl. You have to make sure that there's always water. You have to make sure that the water is always clean. It's a bit labor intensive. Your people are going to be working throughout the day. If you're doing it yourself, it means you're going to work throughout the day. Another advantage of the feedlot is that you feed your animals on grains. So it means your land, which is where our animals normally graze extensively, you're saving on that. So what you can do is you can extend on whatever that you're having, breeding your own animals instead of buying. You can breed your own animals. Say maybe for an example, if you've got like a head of 100 animals, you can start breeding them and they will utilize your land effectively instead of when you were raising your 100 feedlot animals on that land and then you still have to have your breeding animals. It needs a whole lot of space. So if you've got a feedlot, you can put your animals in the small confined spaces and feed them and then still continue breeding so that you can supply for your own feedlot. What is your best advice to someone who is interested in going into the feedlot business? You also have to understand the breeds that you're going to be feeding into your feedlot because there are animals that are not adapted to a certain climate, a certain location. You need to learn, do some sort of a research, go to some sort of courses if you can afford to. But make sure that you understand that the kind of animal that I'm rearing or that I'm feeding into my feedlot is adaptable or it's adapted to this climate or to this condition. Otherwise, you will be rearing a stressed animal that will not give you the weights that you want. So it's going to take you a longer time to actually be able to feed the animal's point. And how does one navigate animal health and disease control in feedlot business? I think the most important thing is try to understand, like I mentioned previously, the kind of diseases that we face in the feedlot are the respiratory, their tummy diseases, and their clostridial diseases. So you need to understand 
what are the diseases that I'm prone to. And by controlling them, you need to have your vaccines in place. You have to have your treating medicines in place because sometimes, even if you have vaccinated, some of the animals might be prone to getting those diseases. So you have to have all the medications in place to control those diseases. For example, the respiratory diseases are caused by mostly by dust. So when you have your sprinklers in place to try and dampen the area every now and then so that there isn't that much dust produced. So those things can be controlled, but it only depends on how much you're willing to learn before you even establish. And my final question, where can people find information or potential funding opportunities for a feedlot startup? You also have to understand your animal's health issues. You have access to healthcare facilities where you can get your medicines, where you can get your veterinary services whenever you need them. Also understand that when you have a sick animal that you're going to isolate it, have it treated and then being brought back to the to the other animals. <clears throat> Another advice is that you start small where you at and then gradually grow. That's your aim. We don't want to stay small. We need to gradually grow, but you cannot just be- decide I'm starting today. I'm going to start with 2000 animals. Start where you're at, learn how you're going to do it. If you're small, it's 1000, it's fine, but you cannot just go all the way. Start where you're at with what you have and then grow gradually. That's the main aim. You cannot just stay there and say, no, I'm only feeding 20 cattle. It it cannot cannot sustain you. You need to start small, grow grow gradually to a certain extent, maybe to a certain capacity, saying, okay, fine, my farm can only carry up to this capacity. I cannot go beyond that. But the aim is to grow gradually. Another advice is that you follow the guidelines on how to best set up your structure to avoid being a health hazard to maybe the dwellers or your workers. You need to understand how you must set up your structure. Also, seek advice from those that came before you. There are farmers that are currently setting up feedlots at their farms, not having to sell their animals to like the more established, or more commercialized, more commercialized feedlots like Sparta, Yosenik, Yokaren your beef master. There are farmers that are actually setting up smaller yana feedlots on their farms. So you can go and seek advice from them. What is it that I need to do? I need to start my own feedlot. How do you place your structures? How do you feed your animals? What are the animals that are adapted to our area and stuff like that? You also need to acquire the market. Make sure that when you set up a feedlot, there's somebody who's going to buy your animals that are ready for slaughter. So you need to consult your abattoirs, find out where the abattoirs are, consider the distance, the road. Do I have transport to transport my own animals? Or would I be able to pay for transport if I don't afford my, if I don't have my own? Would I be able to pay for the logistics? Like you need to understand that as well. Because now if you just go into that business, like I'm starting, I'm ending, you don't have market. You don't know where the roads are. You don't know where the market is. You don't know where the distance is from here to your market. You're setting yourself up for a disaster. Thanks, Octavia. And so great having you join the team and absolutely amazing having you here on Farmers Inside Track. Take a Sako. She's, of course, a consultant at Grow Shoot Cattle Investors. From me, Dawn Numdu, Octavia Spandil and our producer, Megan van der Vent, and the rest of the Food Film Zanzi team, have a great week. Bye for now. Life in South Africa can be a lot. I mean, scroll through Twitter for a minute and tell me I'm wrong. Thank God for South Africans though, right? We're inspiring and even on the bad days, we fight back with a smile. That's why I love Food Form Zanzi so much. They're not ashamed to celebrate the ordinary unsung heroes who work every day to put food on our nation's tables. Go to foodformzanzi.co.za and never miss an inspiring story.